All right. Welcome back, everyone. I have a special guest on. I got Kyle here from California. And he, he's been on Zuber's channel. He's been on Landlord Forever. But I love what he's doing out there. You know, he's uh, four properties right now. He's been house hacking. And he actually had a negative net worth just kind of recently. So welcome, Kyle. Yeah, glad to be here, man. Just uh, glad to see another familiar face and finally get to uh, talk to you in person. So, Yeah, man. So I, I love what you're doing, but why don't you fill my audience in a little about your story and we can kind of dig into that after. Yeah, man. So just to just kind of backtrack from from the beginning, I've just been a, a blue collar worker my whole life. So kind of skipped the college route, uh, just did some landscaping, did some random jobs until I finally kind of got on with the uh, utility that I wanted to here in California. Um, rolling into that, 23, I finally had enough money to uh, buy my first house with the, a down payment assistance program and $8,000. So saved me a lot of money. I had about 10, 15 grand to my name, negative net worth of uh, $18,000 with $28,000 in liabilities and $10,000 in assets. If I'm looking at it right now. And uh, well, you once know, I got let's it, let's stay right there real quick, bro. Since, you're, yeah. since you have your little note, but so how, what, what made you even look into your net worth or whatever at that time? You know, I wasn't really looking into it. I just kind of, when you're filling out all the paperwork and everything, you got a sheet right here just from all the, uh, what you apply for. And it kind of breaks everything down. What's your worth liabilities versus assets. I didn't even know a thing about net worth. I'm going to be honest with you. So when I kind of saw a negative 18,000, it kind of blew my mind a little bit. And then uh, once I started the house hacking situation and kind of living for, for free, almost at that point, starting to, I'd, Kind of had something switch my head from there, man. It's really started to uh, kind of learn and understand and self teach and go from there. So, so I mean, you know, going back a little bit, what really put you down this path of of real estate at such a young age? You know, uh, it's it's a combination of things, man. Being a blue collar worker and kind of skipping the college route really throws you out. And if you're doing blue collar jobs at 18, 19, 20, I was looking back, I was blessed enough to work with guys that are 20, 30, 40 years older. You know, you kind of hear everything they're talking about, what they wish they did, problems they're having, problems to retirement, just a little bit of everything, right? Everyone has a different path and different lifestyles. But uh, and when you're constantly hearing that at 20, 21, 22, you kind of kind of start to flip, man. You see them all, all have nice trucks, nice cars, boats, but then they're complaining about how they need to work seven days a week, you know, just to support all of it. So when, then I, when I bought my first house at 23 and house hacking, living for free, kind of stacking some money, something really clicked between the two. And from there, that's when I realized how powerful real estate was and just knew I didn't want to rely on a 401 pension. And I knew real estate was one of the best ways. So I kind of Kind of been all in since then. But was there like a a book or someone you know in your in your circle that was doing real estate? Because I mean, even if your your mindset shifts, a lot of I, you know when I was that age, you'd probably just be thinking, "Okay, I'm going to work more. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to make more money." Like, what really made you switch to real estate? Yeah, it's a. There wasn't really any mentors or anyone telling me in my life. There's no friends. I'm kind of an outlier in my friend group, and that that aspect most of my friends kind of still living at home at that time or still in co college obviously but uh you know I, I don't want to say it started all out on real estate I think it's when I was able to buy my first home realize the tax benefits and then just kind of having people rent out rooms and pay your own mortgage it kind of transitioned into just figuring this out how to get deeper into it and how to really go all in and just kind of evolved over time to more and more real estate. Then you start, then you start deep diving in it all. I mean, you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you, you find all the podcasts. Next thing you know, you're on bigger pockets. Then bigger pockets transitions to, to the niche, like one rental at a times and a little bit of everything just to kind of evolve the mindset from there. And uh, fast forward over those five years, uh, we're sitting at the four single family homes. I got, 
Osprey here in the East Bay, about 50 minutes east of San Francisco, and then one outside Boise, Idaho. So. Okay, wait, hold on. So you didn't have really anyone in your circle during real estate. You had a negative net worth, <laughs> and you live in California, which everyone says has a is a high uh, entry point prices, and yet you have four properties now. And you do have properties in California, sounds like. So uh, how did you do that? Uh, you know, man, it's a, it's a definition and what I really try to preach of it ever. If, it, if you work towards it, it is possible, man. Uh, keep your expenses low. You really start looking into everything. Like I said, my lender, I talked to her religiously. I moved a little farther out for work. I was commuting two and a half hours a day one way. Uh, you know, four hour round trip for a year or two when I moved into my first house, but I was house hacking, renting out rooms, living for cheap, kind of stacking the cash. And then, uh, like you said, self development and learning and just keeping the expenses low. And let me tell you, it is possible no matter where you're at, no matter your age, no college, no knowledge, no mentors, just really, really kind of figuring it out from real life experiences, blessed enough to work with older people and kind of understand life a little better. So that first property you got, was it traditional financing? Was it move-in ready? Did you have to do any work on it? Like how did that first property go down? Uh, so the first property was an FHA, uh, California Down Payment Assistance Program. So basically, I want to say that property was 470 at the time, which was the max I could get approved for with what I was doing. Ended up getting it. So they take the the down payment, which I believe was about $26,000, give or take a few, few thousand. They put it in a separate loan, kind of a second or a first lien on your house. And then all you do is pay closing costs plus inspection. So in reality, I only paid about eight grand to get into an asset that was 470,000. And then, uh, which had the payment a little more than I wanted at the time, but I was able, I already had already pleaded pre-planned to have some people move in two grand out of the 2,800 a month or whatever the payment was. So in reality, I was paying less than an apartment anywhere else in the, in the Bay area. So it just really made sense. And then plus with a few interest rates and COVID later down the line, I was able to refi pretty much absorb that down payment into the original conventional loan and then uh, lower the payment still at the same time. And at that point, I mean, I was, almost living for free at that point so so in the beginning too that that first property was you already knew the concept of house hacking i didn't actually you know i that was before i had really gotten in and started learning and self-teaching on podcasts about real estate to me it just made sense i mean around 23 people are already talking about moving out sometimes maybe moving into apartments renting with friends so i was like why don't I just do that and have same thing? We all split it, but it's my asset. I don't see a difference between us three renting from a random person versus renting from me. So it just kind of kind of made sense for me, you know, before house hacking was a thing till I till I looked into it and realized I was like, oh, okay, this is this is what people do and really start diving in and start to understand what's going on. So you have three properties in California and you said one in Idaho. So why, why not stay in California? What, what was the reason to get one in Idaho? So Idaho was my second property, believe it or not. Okay. So after, I want to say it was about seven months later um, when I really started to transition and realize how powerful this was, but I didn't have the money and cash to buy in California or do another house hack or anything yet. So I started looking around word of mouth. You kind of get an understanding, especially in blue collar world. A lot of people are trying to get out. They're moving to Tennessee, Texas, Idaho, just places, Arizona. And then I uh, just started doing research, started really looking into Boise, Idaho, because it had a more consistent weather with California compared to the other places. So it made more sense to me. And then at the time it had like the third greatest population growth in the nation. I had already known a few people that have moved out there. So I went and visited, felt more identical to California weather. 
than those other places and kind of pulled the trigger. It was, it was still pretty cheap at the time. About you could get a house. Mine was about 260. You could get them in the 200, 300 range. So pulled the trigger. So has everything kind of been pretty smooth? I mean, you know, your transactions, like what has been the maybe problems you've encountered in this journey so far? Yeah, I'd say one of the relatively, for the most part, I've had some pretty smooth transactions. When I had first bought that Idaho house, I was self-managing and I was running by room because I did know a few people my age. So I rented two rooms to them. But filling that third room between trying to get word of mouth and getting people in, it was okay. I did have one guy kind of just leave out in the middle of the night on me, not pay, never heard from him again. Some guys that weren't working out. It's it's like a co-living thing, trying to get that third guy to really fit um, and self-manage. And they were around my age, so maybe they weren't treating the house the best. I get over there and, you know, kind of see sometimes it's more of a bachelor pad than a house. So, but uh, we cleaned it up. They're gone and kind of just doing traditional renter with property management now. So two years in, it's been really smooth. They actually, after two years, are moving out in two months because they've been building a house. So we extended them one more month with a small rent increase. And I guess uh, we'll kind of see how that goes from there. Market's changed a little bit. So curious to see how that pans out. Wow. So let's see, 28 years old. You have three properties in California, one in Idaho. You've kind of dabbled in rent by the room, self-managing. I mean, you're doing a lot of things that you know, a lot of landlords never experience, I guess, you know, they rent by the room, even self-managing, right? A lot of times they just give it out to a property manager. So is this kind of your vision? Are you trying to, I guess, find your niche or are you trying to scale a certain way? I mean, what is, what does your future look like right now in real estate? Yeah, coming in the year five, my future, I think, is my biggest question next. Like you said, I've dabbled in a few things like this one and my house hack. I self-manage too. like I've done Furnish Finder. I've done Facebook and I actually have one from Furnish Finder, one from Facebook in here at the moment. But coming in the year five, it's really trying to kind of take that next step, evaluate the profile and really see what I want to dive into and kind of like, I'm, I'm still learning a lot as I go. Everything's been self-taught and learning as I go man and so it's like you know it's ever evolving my goal is some kind of financial freedom being a blue collar worker I mean I have been working since I'm 19 you know it's not like I went to college hopped into my corporate job and been working three years you know I've been doing this for a while and I just got an understanding that there's I know there's different routes people are doing it it is possible and I felt like I've built a decent base for being by myself so far and year five is really trying to answer that question and just kind of see what the next best option and and talk to people that are smarter doing it and just a little bit of everything so that's the big question year five out so like you're saying year five i'm assuming you're not at negative net worth anymore we're, we're no longer at a negative net worth being in california We've we've I've been pretty blessed with some uh, some appreciation over the last few years and some COVID booms and in Idaho. So it's and but to say that my cash flow isn't as good. So I've I've had good equity growth, my cash flow, but I was kind of in a growth growth phase. And I do work a lot with my W two job, and I knew it would be okay, but I got to get to a point where maybe I stable out a little bit and have something more you know, a little more safe and really try to transition. That's, that's my big question. I'm really trying to balance out the two and see where do I go from here? So. I think the important thing though, is you have, you know, chips on the table, right? So like you said, you, yeah. you pulled the trigger, you got into real estate, you got into house hacking, and now you have options, right? You've given yourself pieces to play with in a sense, and you can move things around and, and see what works best for you. And and as far as, you know, you said you're, you know, you're self-taught, you know, listening to podcasts. So what has been maybe that next step? I know we've connected in the school community. I, I know you were 
kind of hesitant to join. But I mean, so is that kind of part of the plan is getting putting yourself out there? Yeah, that's my biggest plan, man. I've been pretty, uh, not just past the self-taught thing. I've just kind of always been the more to myself type guy anyway. You know, I, I almost feel like sharing all this is more bragging at my age and stuff, but I just, some people take it that way. And I really try not to put it out there because then I feel like I'm more bragging than kind of just sharing. But I think that was the big step too. that. And like I said, just kind of be into myself in general on most things I do is, you know, I joined school. I had to talk to a few guys, you included, and they're really telling me to put myself out there. And that's, uh, I'm in a self-development stage as well, man. It's all this is brand new and it's, it's helping me out a lot, but it's, it's something that's hard. And it, like I said, it's just a really big self-development thing to not only network and talk to people that are better, but make myself better as well. Like I, you know, if I, if I keep on this path, I, I never end up talking to you or Zuber or Renee. So And all of you guys have been and helping me like no other. So it's, it's a big self-development thing. So. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of fun. I think that's the one thing, you know, in the community, you know, I think like you, like you touched on, you know, in the beginning, sometimes you feel like, am I bragging? Do I have anything to share? And then what you realize is, you know, like even in the school community, there's people ahead of you, people that are getting started and, and everyone is kind of, putting their experience out there, helping each other. And and no one ever really feels, in my opinion, no one ever really feels like someone is bragging. It's, yeah. it's almost just like, hey, I'm just trying to throw this information out there and it could help someone. And and I'm also trying to see if I made a mistake, right? Like maybe I'm going to put yeah. out like I did this, but could I have done it different? Or could I, could I have gotten better results, right? So I think, and, and Zuber always talks about it, right? It's kind of like your circle or your network and, you know, Sometimes we got to audit that and see who, you know, is in our, is in our circle. And, um, you know, I did catch you on Zuber's, you know, YouTube channel, you know, Renee's channel. So you are putting yourself out there. I mean, what is the next step for you on, on the social media side? I, I think you have a YouTube channel that came out, by the way. Yeah, man. So just another step of putting myself out there. I, I did come out with a YouTube channel, Blue Collar Landlord 24. So it's brand new. I'm still working on content, uh, kind of sharing my experiences, talking to different people and just, uh, you know, if, if I can help one person off of that and get some decent content that helps someone else buy a house one day, even if they stay there the rest of their life, man, I, you know, I feel like I've done my job, but it's, it's a combination of helping other people and self-development on my end at the same time. So it's, it's a lot of fun, man. It's getting over the fact of maybe people making fun of you being a blue collar worker or a normal guy, you know, you know, you get some 50 year old blue collar worker, look at some kid with a YouTube channel, they're going to make fun of you, but just got to get okay with the uh, knowing I'm just there to have some fun, help out and, and get over what anyone thinks. So it's a big part of it. So. Yeah. I mean, like you, like we kind of touched off camera, like, you know, you being in the blue collar space and me being in the firehouse is kind of, you kind of get used to, you know, being, yeah. <laughs> being made fun of or whatnot, but it's, it's actually people, like you said, if they're not talking to you, they really don't care about you. Right. So they're doing it in a good way. But I think the one thing that I notice is when you get that first person that, that either reaches out to you or says, Hey, thanks, man, you helped me in, in this area or, or, or they reach out to you to ask you some questions on how to get started. I think that's really going to be where you realize like, Oh yeah, you know, people are, you know, out there do need help, but people out there are trying to figure out ways and maybe they don't relate to, to Zuber or they don't relate to other people that have hundred something properties, right? And they, they find these people that have four properties or, or 10 properties, but yet they're trying to figure out how to get there. And I think that's, you know, you're really going to like that. I think that's really going to, you're really going to enjoy that when someone reaches out to you on that front. But, um, yeah, man, I, I love what you're doing. I mean, I, you know, I, I always talk about my mistakes that I've made in, in my journey. So for you, like if there was someone that was going to reach out to you after this, they see this episode, like what advice would you give them to to get started or what direction would you point them in? Yeah, each individual person obviously has a slightly different path and it's a per person thing. But I mean, my biggest advice, and I kind of preached it with some other people is no matter what your background or what you're doing, it is possible and there's ways to do it. You know, like I said, I, 
I kind of preach mo- one of the most unaffordable places in the nation, being young, still getting in, house hacking type thing. Sometimes sounds cliche and I wouldn't even want to hear it, but I just, my biggest piece of advice is if it's something you want and you work towards, I, like I, I promise you with all the headwinds is, is you can figure it out and make it work. And just to touch back on what you're saying, just the, some of the people that have kind of followed my Instagram and YouTube already that I just kind of put it out there on my old social medias that actually followed and, and reached out was, was pretty surprising and awesome. And so it's, it, it kind of caught me off guard and had one person kind of message me already that I haven't talked to in years, but I just know ish from high school. And I mean, and that's, that's a weekend man without too much content, but just trying to share and if I can help anyone out I mean I'm I'm there for it man yeah I think what you're going to find out too is like the the real estate community is just so different than other communities like everyone is really trying to help each other out and it's the whole networking thing because you don't know where your next deal is going to come from right I mean every and like I always joke about it that no one ever has enough money to buy every deal so it's kind of mm-hmm. like you know, you might be strapped for money at one point, but someone else that you know can take advantage of it. And that's why you're like, hey, t- you know, take a look at this deal that I, I can't take advantage of right now, but, you know, send me one back five years from now or something like that, right? But I think that's what you're going to find out. I mean, it's such a great community. But um, yeah, talking about your YouTube channel, and, you know, your the episodes that you've been on other people's podcasts. Like, so what is the name of your YouTube channel? The YouTube channel is Blue Collar, Blue Collar Landlord. So that's kind of what I'm rolling with. I'm just trying to kind of preach the to the to normal people out there that maybe didn't go to college and someone got looked down down on at first just because they didn't go or you know, don't get me wrong, my friends are awesome. They weren't looking down on me, but no one ever probably thought I'd ever find this path. You know what I mean? From from everyone that I knew back in the day. But uh just to kind of preach that message a little bit and to anyone random that feels like it's it's uh everything against them are not possible is is that you could find a way. So, and uh, go from there, kind of evolve and find my niche. Are you, so where, what's your next step though? So it sounds like, you know, like you're saying, California prices have, have gone up quite a bit. You do invest out of state, you know? So like, are you looking at expanding out of state and doing more remote investing? Are you trying to find deals in California? I, you know, like I said, year five, that's, that's my biggest question. Why I'm really trying to learn as much as I can and what everyone's doing across the nation. And that's been the best part about talking to everyone so far in my head, my ideology, I, I think remote investing, trying to find the stabilization of some cash flow, maybe with some appreciation areas, not just strictly cash flow. Cause I do have a little bit of time on my side, obviously trying to find the best of both worlds. But I think just trying to stable out, really get that cash flow come in a little more solid, and then maybe hit the point where I could transition or really, really kind of jump in and get even more deals. Because with the California houses I bought, you know, the, your dry powder runs out pretty quick when you're putting out down payments, and you know, there's some of these rehabs and just, uh, just trying to figure out where I could deploy that capital, and and really get started and maybe reset and evaluate the whole portfolio and you know kind of kind of go from there there's there's a lot of questions coming in but that's why I'm here man putting myself out because I'm I'm learning more than I ever have by myself so yeah well I'm I'm sure you're getting a lot of um, feedback or advice from from the school community so I have a feeling that your um, skepticism about the school community (laughs) has has gone away and and is it worth the $20 a month you think yeah, man, it's it's worth the twenty bucks all day. If, if if you're even remotely skeptical or highly skeptical, trust me, there's probably no one more skeptical than I was, or just worried about uh how how much benefit I was going to get out of. But if you put yourself out there, kind of the touchback on what you're saying, I I just couldn't believe how uh, how helpful and excited everyone was. That if you're in there, you're excited to be there, and it's because you want to be there. It's not like a free group that. You join on Facebook and there's, you know, kind of just people that aren't helping out or bragging or just kind of like, you know, there's like 200 of us. Everyone in there is more than willing to share 
their experiences are help and it's it's blown my mind just the connection so far yeah they don't get too excited when i come around though i think trouble is coming but <laughs> i think it depends yeah <laughs> everyone else gets excited too if you frank's the one usually on the losing end of that it seems like so <laughs> It's but on his the expense. next big question, though, is will people get to meet you at the O'Rat event in Vegas coming up in February? Yeah, I, I haven't bought my ticket yet, but I, I'm definitely leaning towards the yes aspect. I've, I've been kind of feeling out who's going, but, but in my mind, if if I'm paying 20 bucks to go to school and it's been this good, imagine what it's going to be like face to face. So I don't I don't see why I wouldn't go at this point. You know, might as well keep doing the self-development train and, you know, go do it in person, man. And yeah. nothing beats that so it's a great event i highly recommend going um but it looks like so last year one of the um i guess uh feedback that zuber got was people didn't have name tags and he actually was thinking about doing it uh, you know it was his first event he kind of got caught up doing other things and he forgot about name tags and things but that's definitely going to be a part of this year's event and i think the one thing people it's kind of they want name tag also with their social media a handle or a contact so that you know a lot of times we, you would meet someone and, and you didn't realize you actually have connected with them on social media but they, ha- they go by a different name right so with that being said you know you mentioned your youtube channel name so where where else can they reach you where what other platforms are you on yeah i am on uh, instagram as well uh, working landlord 24 so kind of the same idea i'm still working that out as i go trying to trying to really uh just learn the platforms but I am working on content. I have a mic and a headset coming in later today to really force myself to keep keep continuing on this uh, this path, whether people are watching it or not. I've been told a few times no one watches the first 30 to 50 videos anyway, other than maybe your hundreds, mom. So hundreds, first hundreds, hundreds. No, hundreds. <laughs> but 50 it sure, might be yeah. for me, man. If, but if, <laughs> if one person gets something out of it, that's I guess that's all that matters. So I do have the mic and the headset coming to get a little better audio and I'll work on the background. You know, the white wall's not cutting it looking at you. So no, well, mine is just just what happened. My this was my son's extra room at the time, and I just left it because I keep saying I'm gonna move out of this this house <laughs> and rent it out. And so I just I've rolled with it, but it, it's pretty cool. A lot of people are still into comics, they like the Marvel and the DC going back and forth. Um, so you know, it, it's just part of it already. But yeah, you just just have fun with it. That's that would be my biggest advice. And you, you're gonna find the people that want to support you it, it's funny people that i've known for 40 years you know probably don't sub- check out my channel or won't even subscribe but people like like you and people that i've met in the school community people that i've known for a few months it's like you know they'll subscribe they're on your lives they're you know, they're supporting they're sharing your things you know like people I, and you know I, I talk about it's funny i don't know like i said i'm not sure if you know my whole story but my, my son's mom we're not together but you know she started a business um so we were living in hawaii she's from north carolina she had a business in north she started a business in north carolina and i always look back and i feel bad now that i supported her but i didn't truly support her like i didn't realize like just sharing her her instagram post or you know i didn't realize how far that goes like just by sharing it or just commenting something or just now that i look back i realize like that's the support that people are looking for like yeah I, I supported her in words but i didn't actually just hey it's so easy to share something it's so easy to like it or comment or even just put a thumbs up on on the post or something right and, and i look back and I, it's funny that like i said I, you know there's people that i've known for my whole life and they will not subscribe to my channel or are not going to share anything um, but there's people that you just met and they're going to share and promote your stuff and I think that's what's so great about this community. Everyone's trying to help each other and, you know, we're having fun with it. So, so keep it up, man. I, I love what you're doing. You know, I know I, I'm no doubt in my mind that, you know, you're going to be putting out some good stuff and, you know, I love what you're doing. So yeah, man, we'll do this again. And hopefully we can get you on some of the lives, have some fun with that. And yeah, man, we'll, we'll do this again, man. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. I, I really look forward to it. This was a lot of fun and I, I know we'll be in touch here uh, more often than not. So All right. it was uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, so go get go check him out. Go check out his YouTube channel. Go subscribe right now. And we'll do this.